to get us to reveal our hearts and to appreciate the things that, uh, that we should do. And so as you think about uh, this last lesson, uh, and doing right things with the wrong heart does not please God, appreciate, appreciate what it is that, uh, that God has done for us. He asks us to be genuine and true, unlike the Pharisees. Here in Matthew 23, where he talked to where Jesus preached against the Pharisees, saying, they do their deeds to be seen by others, they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love peace and places of honor at the feast and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. They're doing lots of right things. They're doing religious things, good things, but they're doing them for the wrong reason. And that doesn't lose God. Just like Jonah being angry that these people repented didn't please God, even though Jonah had done what it was that God wanted him to do. And Christ calls that out. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. When we act religious, but we don't live with justice and faith and mercy, as Jesus says here, he says, you're a blind guy straining out gnats and swallowing a camel. And he calls them in different places a brood of vipers because you're speaking good, but you're doing evil. And really the principle that we want to see here as we finish this up this morning is what he says there in verse 35, that the good person out of the good treasure brings forth good. That's the kind of heart that we need to have in order to be pleasing to God. And we have that heart when we think about what it is that Jesus has done for us and what God has done for us. And that's really what Jonah needed to appreciate. That's the message that God was trying to help him see. Here's this plant that, that you know, you didn't make, uh, you didn't raise it up, uh, you're taking advantage of what's there, uh, you like that it's there, and you're angry when it's gone, and you didn't labor for it at all. Yet I, you know, God was talking about the idea of, of his people and that he has created all people and he cares for all people and if they will repent and follow him then those people might be saved and Jonah should be happy about that. He should understand God's mercy and just as, as Paul writes here in Romans about how we ought to think about what God has done for us. He says in verse 31, what shall we say to these things if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave all things for us how shall, gave up, gave up all things for us, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? We think about that and think about this verse that people know so well, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. And this morning as you think about that and you think about all these lessons that we might learn from, from this journey of Jonah and how we kind of, you know, looked at the old and the new and, and put all that together to appreciate that doing things with the wrong heart does not please God, but God calls us to have the kind of heart that is willing to submit to him, willing to be pleasing to him in that way, <coughs> and will help us appreciate the things that he has done for us as well. I appreciate your kind attention this morning, and I hope that you know some of these things will resonate with you as you think about your daily walk uh, in life before God, and how others, and how you are going to be able to help and influence others well. This morning, if there's anything that we can do for you to help you in that journey, to help you on your personal journey, whether it's to be baptized into Christ for the very first time, or whether it's to repent of sin and turn back towards the path uh, that God wants you to be on, please let us know how we can help by coming to the front. Let's get we stand. Jesus, the love and gentleness of God, the love and gentleness of God, the love and gentleness of God, the love and gentleness of God,